here to you for joining us, my lad. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Who Wednesday. We got the number. I believe it's episode 13. Now, basically, for the future for Who Wednesday, I've decided how about I do a either a discussion or a review of each Doctor era. So this one is why I love the very first companions, Ian, Barbara, and Susan, which of course of the first Doctor era. Then I'll do something of second Doctor, the Doctor, oh. and proceeding on um, when I get to the eighth. I'll do a war, uh, probably a discussion on the War Doctor, on the Wilderness Years, um, then back to, of course, the Revival, 9, 10, 11, and 12, and depending on sort of, m like, many sort of interspaced discussions, like maybe the mo uh, discussion on the multi doctor stories and stuff, um, it will probably lead to Series 9, where, I, you know, when I talk about the 12th Doctor, it'll may be time to talk about Series 9 and review the and preview the episodes of Series 9 and sort of the high bits game. So I sit back and relax and enjoy my video on why I love the very first companions in 1963, Ian Christopher, Barbara Wright and Susan Foreman. So let's start with one of the very few people you see in the very first episode, Barbara Wright, a history che teacher at Coal Hill School in, 1960 in the 1960s. And of course she is pondering on um, the greatest mystery of all. Who is Susan Foreman? Why does she act up the way she does and talk about the decimal system and stuff like that? And it's Barbara's duty of care, well pretty much Barbara and Ian's duty of care to go and do something and, and discover the mystery and I think I can pretty much summarize Barbara and this Barbara's character in a way that she'll put herself forward to get down to the right get to the right the, the solution of the right the right pretty much she, she in the Aztecs want she puts herself forward to stop the killings and she's putting herself forward to say you know to make sure she, Susan Foreman is okay which of course is a very good character and a very strong female personality in general Unfortunately, out of the three, Barbara is one I don't have much on. However, the actress Jacqueline Hill does give a great performance as Barbara. She can do um, curious and worried and frightened, especially when confronting a Dalek plunger information or, or, or grasp on. But this will. But what I'll have to say about her will move on to when I talk about Ian Chesterton. He may as well be labelled one of the best male companions of Doctor Who in general. This guy has a lot going for him for a science teacher. He's very humble, but sometimes can get really assertive if, you know, the doctor gets so arrogant and ignorant. Um, and the way he sort of, either, it sort of sticks by him, even when the doctor pretty much insults the pair of them. It, it, it shows that he's, he's trying to get to this man and get some sense out of him. You could technically say Ian Chesterton is the science Act to the science fiction that is the Doctor. What a pretty great parallel. From helping in people in medical need to fighting off an Aztec in the Aztecs, my god, he just goes pretty badass and really learning from his travels. It's and just it, William Russell it, it performs really really well of a, as a man pretty much a man from the twentieth century uh, would react um, of course uh, you know, so to really of course connect with the audience which is fantastic and pretty much since they barged into the Doctor's life they've always wanted to go home and at the end of the chase when Ian and Barbara leave they just he wants us to have the pint of beer and he wants to go into the park and watch a cricket match. But he has the wits and the humour of a science teacher. He has his own little side jokes, which are always a pleasure to watch. And you're probably thinking, I am praising this character. 
too much, maybe slightly underwritten as these characters are, they still have sparkling personalities that I can enjoy whilst watching a first Doctor story, and to be perfectly honest, the more successful companions in the 60s run, so there you go. So, two human companions. What about the Gallifreyan one? Susan Foreman, the Doctor's granddaughter. She is literally the second legend in the show's history, in a way. She is the very first, well, the very, the, pretty much the very first central mystery plot sort of character of the very first episode, and it has returned since in the Five Doctors, in Audio, and Unearthly Child, and stuff like that. And people really wanted her to return just as much as Tom Baker, just as much as, you know, all the other classic Doctors. This is the person that people love to see back. And unfortunately, she hasn't, which is an absolute shame, because in a way... They sort of need to establish that she's still out there. But luckily, you have something like the Sarah Jane Adventures, where uh, they they sort of fix the gaps for the classic series companions. They had the whole thing at the end of Death of the Doctor, which, you know, Death of the Doctor really does establish that, well, Ian and Barbara are married, and Tegan's off doing the stuff, and Susan's around as well, which is uh, brilliant in my eyes. Now, let's talk about the character herself. So, her student life at Coal Hill School, of course she's pretty struggling to get the grasps, grasp on the 20th century. You know, she's getting confused by talking about things like the decimal system and um, how her the science experiments can cock up for Ian Chesterton. But her knowledge can, in a way, imitate the two human characters and like, well this is beyond anything we've uh, beyond our imagine, imagining which sort of uh, in, in, intimidates them intimidates the third few characters which is which is great and very unearthly wouldn't you say Da -dun so here is the conclusion this is a very fantastic TARDIS crew you know that why I love William, why I think William Hartnell's Doctor is very underrated well of course reasons like this you have a fantastic crew who are working with Verish Lambert who's a very powerful producer at the time Adventure Space and Time of course has proven this and I've said it time and time again and this it, it made William Hart all happy and everyone was really enjoying bringing the show to life in such and with such impossible ideas and it managed to do something brand new and reach out and and they did it really well and it's gone so far that they bring in new companions that the first doctor regenerates this is a great story that the daleks the edge of destruction the aztecs the dalek invasion of earth has those very iconic moments because they're the first moments for the characters and you feel the growth and how brilliant they are and you know what at the end they're still remembered ian and barbara do get married and it's beautiful, and Susan will go off with David and have their own lives, like humans do. They're not alien characters, they're not, you know, unrelatable. They are completely and utterly relatable, which just makes them it just makes them brilliant, and probably why I love William Hartle's Doctor a lot more than can be said for others, you know. I'm trying to think of an example like the Fifth Doctor and Nyssa, you know. Not much going on there, but here... It's watchable, absolutely watchable. And as sopious as may sound, there is still love in the universe. Whether it's Susan and David, Ian and Barbara, or just the Doctor's love for his granddaughter, there are many different loves out there. It's soppy and stupid, I know, but very human and connectable. So there you have it. Ian, Barbara and Susan. So, oh yeah. I'm going to bring back the news feature because there's been quite a bit of news that I must cover in case I don't on a hang-up or something. Here's the thing, I did top three but I'm going to have to cheat because they sort of, they're sort of both relevant together. Um, first off, you have these brand new monsters for Series 9 that have been recently announced and they look cool and of course there's been some filming going on with Peter Capaldi and Maisie Williams in this medieval adventure and I'm really looking forward to it. I'm not quite sure who's writing the script, I'm guessing it's Mark Gattis, but I'm interested to see where it goes. I hope it doesn't do Robot Sherwood 2, but let's see what they can do. The next three 12th Doctor novels have been announced. What is of the Glamour Chronicles, which I'm guessing is sort of an overarching um, storyline. So we have The Big Band Generation by Gary Russell, Deep Time by Trevor Baxendale, and what you see on the screen is a bit of the cover of Royal Blood by Una McCormick. 
Cormac, which of course is another rob- robot of Sherwood type thing. God, they really like to make their robot of Sherwood stories. So that's all the 12th Doctor news. Now to the big finish news, which is two. One is that Tortured is coming back in a six-part series, and I'm interested to see where this goes. It's the cover, of course, looks great, and this is sort of this is their second New Who license after the Unit Extinction news, and of course, it's great to see Captain Jack back along with, I believe, Gwen and Reese. I presume this will take place after Miracle Day, and this could see the return of Torture on television quite soon. And now, Radio Four have announced that they're going to marathon. They're going to show the list. They're going to put on the Fourth Doctor audio, the first season of the Fourth Doctor audio, which excites me to no end. And hang on, who's that girl there? Oh my God! No, not her. No, not that. Not that terrible character. No, Raquel Cassidy. No, no, I'm kidding. Tom's on the cover from Tales of Winter as is Leela. So that pleases me. But get her off the bloody screen, please. Go to myself. And then I'll read your comments now. So, why is the Twelfth Doctor great? Well, two people commented with the answer. So, I'm going to start at the very top one, Parachute Walker. Peter Capaldi is very cool. Oh, sorry, let me flip the right now. Go ahead. Yeah, here we go. Peter Capaldi is very cool. I'm in total awe of not just his incarnation of the Doctor, but also the man himself. I, 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 I presume there's something about Peter Capaldi himself that um, makes people really like him. Anyone who is ageist and doesn't like him as the Doctor needs to reevaluate their opinion. Well, yeah, I'm talking about the sort of second or first oldest Doctor in Doctor Who, so it's quite fitting. Be- because I'm telling you now, he's going to be one of the best. Absolutely agree. If the writing is top top notch. I hope so anyway. Second and last comment is from Labyrinth 35. Great video, Adam. Not only is the 12th Doctor a legend, but so is Peter Capaldi. I really did enjoy Series 8, and the majority of that is down to Capaldi himself. He is brilliant. His dedication to the show and the fans warms my heart so much. He is an amazing sponsor for the show. I can't wait for Series 9, and I know that even if the stories aren't great, I know that Peter will be. Definitely. So that has been the comments. I, I sort of wanted to be right back for the last video, um, to sort of generate that sort of what is it about him, and y- you guys did well. So, what's it going to be next week? Ah, well, I must not waste any more time. <laughs>